this is live prepper here. I'm still hiding away in my storage room for the winter. But this here is a scenario I'm proposing to you. A community has created itself. And you've kind of divided it in different groups, but you still work together. Now you got one group, it's called a hunting group, hunting clan basically. And their responsibility mainly is to go out and hunt for meat and stuff, uh, to harvest fish and things like that. But at the same time, you want to respect nature. So they've learned they've got to not overhunt, but respect. Now that's one of your clans. Another one of the clans is your uh, healers, herbalists and stuff. They're the ones that take care of the people when they're sick and stuff. Uh, they raise their own herbs and things like that. Make your own medicines and stuff. These here are your healers. Then your other group is the farmers. Now the farmers are responsible for raising the vegetables and things like that. And they also take care of the horses and things like that. Basically. Now the ranchers and the farmers are just combined into one basic group. And they just call them the farmers. Because they take care of all of that in an area. And then you got another group that basically just does a little everything they from um, cooking the meals to washing the dishes to making the blankets to basically whatever is needed so basically you got four different types of group now what y'all have done is y'all chose five elders or council members to help keep things organized basically and their responsibility is to know how much food there is how much this is this is this and keep everything in a balance on things. So, here's what the deal is. You've come across one of those people that you, your group banished from your community. Now, there was three of them. They was all part of the hunter clan. But they had gotten the big head. They thought because they was part of the hunting clan, they should not do other labors. Now, that was how it's set up. Everybody does everything. They did not feel they should have to go and pull weeds out of the garden. They did not feel they should have to help the healers take care of somebody that's needing a bone set or heal it or whatever. They did not feel they should have to wash dishes or cook a meal. Because they are of the hunter clan, and if they didn't bring meat in for these people, these people wouldn't have meat to eat. So they should be waited on, not vice versa. So they created a lot of problems. They was bullying on people, picking on people. One of them almost raped your daughter. And these three guys was responsible for bullying on your son who uh, did not care much about hunting. That was not his forte, but he was more happy just cooking. He loved to cook. Whip up meal out of nothing. Now, he was happy in that area, but he still did his duty as hunting because he was raised up in the hunting plant. But he was picked on. So this here is... The kind of people now what happens down the road is you've done found this one of them laying out there in the woods that y'all have already banished he's about near death he's just in bad shape and what happened is he tells you that they was out there and a pack of wild dogs started stalking them and they managed to get away from them for a while but then one by one they would separate one of y'all and then you would hear the screams and stuff, and you find them later just totally ripped apart. Just totally destroyed, totally ripped apart. But whatever was left of them after they got done finishing it. He managed to get away by luck, he says. He says by luck. But you're not so certain on it because this is the one that was responsible for bullying your son, and this was the one that almost raped your daughter. Because he wanted your daughter as his wife, but she did not want anything to do with him. Because he bullied her brother. So you have this dilemma. Do I take him back to the camp, to the, the community, 
and have the healers treat him or do I let him lay there and die? Because I know, I know in my heart, if the shoe was on the other foot, he would not do the same for me. And I'll tell you how they got banished. These three just refused to do anything to help in the community. I mean, they just was bullying and carrying on. And people try to tolerate it. Said, well, we'll look the other way. You know, maybe it'll be passed. Maybe they'll change. But what happened is they decided one day the council members was having a meeting. And the one that was in charge was a farmer. Now, they hated this because the farmer was in charge when it should be a hunter. But the difference why they chose this farmer to be head of the elders, the council member, was because he would go hunting if they needed another hunter. He would get out there and pull the weeds if he needed to pull weeds. He'd get out there and wash clothes if clothes needed wash. He would help the healers if the healers needed it. It didn't matter what it was. If he was needed, he did it. So that's why he was chose to be in charge. But these three men of the hunting clan thought that was wrong. So they went in, decided they're going to take over. They went in there, they beat the tar out of all of them, tie, uh, tied them up. And then they stood out there and they started hollering for everybody. You have this little chime thing they built, a bell for everybody to come. And when they come, they told them, see, we are in charge now. And this is how things going to be. We will decide who gets what. And we are not going to be doing these so-called chores, these labors. You are going to come and take care of us. And if you don't do what we want, you're not going to get no meat. We're not going to let you have any of the meat from the hunting plant. And everybody's just standing around, mouth hanging open. They're just, oh. Then, to prove a point, he said, we we're going to show you why we we're in charge. And they grabbed the five council members and they tossed them out in the, in the dirt, in the grass. Well, all at once, all these people just seen fire in their eyes. They were just tired of it. They had enough of it. Before these three could do anything, all of them come down on them and had them, tied them up. Had them ready. And so a trial came, and it was decided by the five council members because the fact is is that two of them mother came begging, please do not kill my son. Banish him, but don't kill my son. Please, please don't kill my son. Please don't kill him. So they decided to banish him. So they did. But what they done is they had the healers give them a mixture of a drug that would make them sleep. They loaded them up in this wagon, put a bag over their head, started traveling. And they left them days down the road, rugged up, out in the woods somewhere with their belongings. They was nice enough to leave them some belongings, some weapons, and food to survive on. So here's your dilemma. The other two are supposedly dead. And what this one says. And this one here was after the worst of the three. This one here would cut his best friend's throat if it served his purpose. This one was the worst of the three. This is the one that nobody came and defended because even his own parents was ashamed of him. So would you, being one of the council members who he beaten up, would you take him back to the camp, to the community, and have the healers doctor him up and treat him. Would you do that or would you just let him lay there and die? What would you do? That's a hard choice to make in a situation. Because you know on the other foot, he would not do the same for you. He would let you die. So that's what I'm asking you. This is the worst of the three. You know there's probably more to the story. But would you take him back to the community let them heal him up, or would you just let him lay there and die? So that's what I'm asking. Which would you do? This is Live Prepper here, Willow Joe. I want you to be safe, be happy. Bless you all.